In section 2.7, we look at combining functions. This is a review topic. So first of all, we'll talk about the basic combinations of functions. So if you're given two functions, f and g, and suppose they have domains a and b, respectively, then the functions f plus g, f minus g, f times g, and f divided by g are defined as follows. And so all of these are very similar, but for example, the function f plus g of x is defined to be f of x plus g of x. And the domain of this function is a intersect b. And so this notation you may not be familiar with. So let me just mention down below here that a intersect b is equal to the set of all numbers in both A and B. So basically, if A is the domain of the function F and B is the domain of the function G, A intersect B is the set of all numbers that belong to both domains. So it's what the domains have in common. So notice that for f plus g, f minus g, and f times g, the domain is simply the intersection of the two domains. But for f divided by g, the domain is all those numbers in that intersection, along with the fact that we know that the denominator cannot be 0. And this will make more sense as we do an example. So let's have a look. So for our first example, let f of x equal 3 minus x, and g of x equal x squared minus 5x. And we want to go ahead and find all of these basic combinations along with their domains. So first of all, let's just mention that the domain of f of x is all real numbers, and the domain of g of x is all real numbers. So if the domain of f of x is equal to the set a, this is going to equal the set of all real numbers. And the domain of g of x, we'll call that set b. This is also going to equal all real numbers. So a intersected with b is also going to be all real numbers, right? because both sets are the same, so their intersection is the same set as well. So for the first part, when we want to look at the function f plus g of x, this is defined to be f of x plus g of x. And that means we're going to take the function 3 minus x, and we're going to add it to the function x squared minus 5x. And if we combine like terms, we get x squared minus 6x plus 3. So this is the function f plus g of x. And again, its domain is all real numbers, right? Because this domain is this a intersected with b, which we already mentioned is all real numbers. f minus g is the same idea, except that f minus g is defined to be f of x minus g of x, so f of x is 3 minus x, and we're going to subtract g of x. And so when you subtract the function g of x, you need to make sure that you use parentheses because that negative must be distributed to both terms. And if we do the math on this, this is 3 minus x minus x squared plus 5x, and simplifying, we get negative x squared plus 4x, plus 3. And again, its domain is the set of all real numbers. Now let's find f times g. f times g of x is basically just f of x multiplied by g of x. So that's going to be 3 minus x multiplied by x squared minus 5x. 
And for this, we're just going to foil. So when we multiply this out, we get 3x squared minus 15x minus x cubed plus 5x squared. And upon combining like terms and reordering the terms, we get negative x cubed plus 8x squared minus 15x. And again, its domain is all real numbers. So the domain for problems 1, 2, and 3 is the set of all real numbers. Now let's look at the fourth one, which is f divided by g. f divided by g of x is simply defined to be f of x divided by g of x. And f of x is 3 minus x, and g of x is x squared minus 5x. And this does not simplify. So this is basically our answer for f divided by g. However, when we go to look at the domain, the domain now is not going to be all real numbers because we have the additional restriction that the denominator cannot be equal to zero. So to figure out the domain, I'm going to take the denominator and set it equal to zero. And I can solve this by factoring. And we get two solutions here. We get zero and five. And remember, this is when the denominator equals zero. So we have to say x cannot be equal to zero and x cannot be equal to five. So on a number line, zero is here and five is here. The domain is all the values of x except for zero and except for five. And so that domain is going to be minus infinity up to zero union 0 up to 5, union 5 to infinity. And we don't include 0 or 5 in these intervals because, again, those are um, excluded values from the domain. So anytime you divide, you have to have the additional restriction that the denominator cannot be 0. And sometimes you'll have to figure that out. So let's take a look at another example. This time, f of x is the function x minus 3, and g of x is the function square root of x plus 2. And let's think about the domains here. So I'm going to call the domain of f that'll be set a, and that set will just be all row numbers. There are no restrictions to uh, x minus 3. However, the domain for g, which we will call set b, does have restrictions because we know that whatever's inside the square root cannot be less than zero. So we know that x plus two must be greater than or equal to zero. And if we subtract two from both sides, we get x is greater than or equal to negative two. And so our domain for set B, or our domain for the function G rather, which I'm calling set B, is all the numbers from negative two to infinity including negative two. Okay, so let's go ahead and compute the functions and state their domains. So f plus g is nothing more than f of x plus g of x. And so that's going to be the function f of x, which is x minus three, plus the function g of x, which is the square root of x plus two. And there's no like terms that can be combined here, so that's actually what f plus g is equal to. And the domain, remember now, is a intersected with b. So it's what these two sets of numbers have in common. Let's take a look at that real quick. We'll draw a number line here. And we'll put the number negative two on the number line. Set a is all real numbers. So if I were to shade the domain for set A, it would be everything on the line. But set B is only those numbers that are greater than or equal to negative two. So that would be these numbers here. So the intersection of these two domains 
is all the points that they have in common. Well, the points they have in common would be this part of the number line. So the domain A intersect B is negative 2 to infinity, including negative 2. And that is the domain of our function f plus g. Now for f minus g, it's the same idea. We're going to take f of x, which is x minus 3, and we're going to subtract g of x. And that's all there is to it. We can't combine anything there. And again, its domain, which is also a intersect b, is once again all the numbers from negative 2 up to infinity. f times g, well, f is x minus 3. I'm going to put parentheses around that because we're going to multiply that by g, which is the square root of x plus 2. And you can leave your answer like this, or if you choose to multiply it out, you would get x times the square root of x plus 2 minus 3 times the square root of x plus 2. And to be quite honest with you, I, I think I prefer this answer. And once again, its domain is the intersection of a and b, and that is, once again, all the numbers from negative 2 to infinity. Now let's take a look at f divided by g. f divided by g is, again, you just take f of x, which is x minus 3, divided by g of x, which is the square root of x plus 2. And we know that the domain can only be, at the most, the intersection of the two sets. So it can, at the most, be the same domain that we have up above here. However, since we have a denominator now, we know that the square root of x plus 2 cannot be 0, right? And that means that x cannot be negative 2, because if you put negative 2 in here, you get... 0, and the square root of 0 would be 0. So what we're going to do for the domain here, the domain is A intersect B, but with the additional restriction that X cannot be negative 2. So here's our domain A intersect B, but now we cannot include negative 2, so I'm just going to modify that by putting a parentheses there instead of a bracket. So we just get that additional restriction. Okay, and I have one more here that I'd like to take a look at. And that is g divided by f. g divided by f would be g of x divided by f of x. And g of x is the square root of x plus 2. And f of x is x minus 3. So the question is, you know, what is its domain? Well, once again, the domain can be at the most A intersect B, which is all the numbers from negative 2 to infinity. However, we have the additional restriction that X minus 3 cannot be equal to 0. And that means that X cannot be equal to 3. So when you go to look at your domain, we were already restricted to the values from negative 2 to infinity, right? So this is the domain A intersect B. However, x cannot be equal to 3, and 3 is somewhere over here. So we have to exclude that value. And the way we do that is we're just going to put a couple of parentheses there. And so the domain for this one would be all the numbers from negative 2 up to 3, not including 3, union and then all the numbers from 3 to infinity. So the actual combining of functions by adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing isn't really all that difficult, but sometimes the domain can be a little bit tricky. Okay, we'll take a look at one more example. This time we have f of x equals the square root of 9 minus x squared and g of x is equal to the square root of x plus 2. So let's go ahead and talk about the domains before we start talking about the combinations of functions. 
So for f of x, the domain of f of x, which again I will call set A, is going to be all the numbers that we can plug into here. And for that, we know that 9 minus x squared must be greater than or equal to 0. That means 9 must be greater than or equal to x squared. And if we take the square root of both sides, we get 3 is greater than or equal to the absolute value of x. And that means the absolute value of x is less than or equal to 3. And the definition for this is that x must be a number in between negative 3 and positive 3. So the domain of f is all the numbers in between negative 3 and positive 3. Now the domain for g, which I'm calling set b, this is once again just the square root of x plus 2. So we know that x plus 2 must be greater than or equal to 0. And that means x must be greater than or equal to negative 2. And so that is uh, the same as the problem on the preceding page. Domain is minus 2 to infinity. Now we already know that we're going to need a intersected with b. So a intersected with b is the intersection of these two sets of numbers. So here are the important numbers. The set A includes all the numbers in between negative 3 and positive 3. And the set B consists of all the numbers from negative 2 to infinity. And so A intersected with B is all those numbers that belong to both sets. And so that would be the numbers in between negative 2 and positive 3, including both endpoints. Okay, so I've kind of predetermined the domain for f plus g there. So let's go ahead and take a look at f plus g now. f plus g is defined to be f of x plus g of x, which is simply the square root of 9 minus x squared plus the square root of x plus 2. And I know it's probably tempting to try to combine these, but you actually can't combine these. And the domain for this function would just be all the numbers between negative 2 and positive 3, as we mentioned above there. Let's take a look at f divided by g. f divided by g is f of x divided by g of x. f of x is the square root of 9 minus x squared, and g of x is the square root of x plus 2. And you can leave it like that, or you can combine these into a single radical. And there's some other things you can do. You can rationalize the denominator. I'm not going to worry about that right now at this point. But the domain for this function is going to be, at the most, the a intersect b, except now we also have to think about what number would make the denominator 0. It's pretty clear that that number is negative 2, so we cannot include negative 2. So our domain is going to be the same as this domain here, except for negative 2 now is not included. And so that is going to be this domain. And honestly, out of the two of these, I think this answer looks a little bit nicer, but either answer here would be acceptable. And for number 3, let's do g divided by f. Same idea. This is just g of x divided by f of x which is the square root of x plus 2 divided by the square root of 9 minus x squared, which we can once again combine into a single radical, just like we did above there. And the domain for this one, well, once again, we know that at the most it can be this domain. However, we have to think about when will the denominator equal 0? Well, 9 minus x squared equals 0 
when x equals 3 or negative 3. So we have to exclude 3 and also negative 3. Well, negative 3 is already not a part of this domain, so we don't have to worry about that. But 3 is, so we have to exclude that value. And so the domain would be all the numbers from negative 2 to positive 3, not including the 3. So again, the combinations themselves aren't too terribly difficult, but the domain can be a little bit tricky. Now we look at compositions of functions. A composition is another way to combine two functions together, but it does not use the traditional operations of addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division. So the definition of a composition is that if you have two functions, f and g, the composite function that we write this way is called the composition of f and g. And it is defined to be f of g of x. So basically what we're doing here is we're taking one function and we're plugging it into the other function. So this is not multiplication. This is substituting one function in for the other. Now the domain of f of g is the set of all x in the domain of g such that g of x is in the domain of f. In other words, f of g of x is defined wherever both g of x and f of g of x are defined. We'll talk more about domain in some examples. But what's the point of a composition? Well, what you're basically doing in a composition is you're starting with some number x, and you're plugging it into the function g, and that gives you the function value g of x. And then we are taking that number g of x, and we're plugging it into the function f, and that gives us another value, f of g of x. The composition is a shortcut which will take you from the beginning value to the end value, bypassing the middle function. So it's a shortcut to plugging a value into two successive functions. Let's take a look at some examples. So first, let's just make sure we have the basic concept down. Suppose f of x is the function 5x minus 4, and g of x is the function 6 minus x squared. And the first thing I want to do is find f of g of 3. So the definition says that this is equal to f of g of 3. And the way we can do this is, first of all, we can just figure out what g of 3 is. So let's do that math. G of 3 means to just plug the number 3 into the g function. So this would be 6 minus 3 squared, which is 6 minus 9, which is negative 3. Once we know g of 3 is equal to negative 3, we are now just going to take f of that value. Now f of negative 3 means to simply plug negative 3 into the f function. And when we do the math here, we get negative 15 minus 4, which is negative 19. Now, likewise, let's take a look at f of g of negative 1. Excuse me, g of f of negative 1. And this is, by definition, g of f of negative 1. And so we're going to start by plugging negative 1 into the f function f of negative 1 is 5 times negative 1 minus 4, and this is negative 9. And then now once we know f of negative 1 is negative 9, we're just going to take g of negative 9. And g of negative 9 means to plug negative 9 into the g function. And so this is 6 minus negative 9 squared. And be careful here right? These do not turn into a positive because we have to square negative 9 first. So this becomes 6 minus, and then negative 9 quantity squared is 81. And 6 minus 81 is negative 75. Next, we have f of f of 2. And this can sometimes be a little confusing for people. 
but this simply means you're going to plug 2 into the function f, and then you're going to take that value and plug it into the function f again. So first, let's start with the inside. What is f of 2? Well, it's 5 times 2 minus 4, and this is 10 minus 4, which is 6. So once we know f of 2 is 6, this is now just going to be f of 6. And f of 6, now we plug 6 into the f function. That is 5 times 6 minus 4, which is 30 minus 4, which is equal to 26. Okay, now we're going to go to the process of finding the actual composition function itself. So instead of just plugging a number into this composition, now we just want to find what is f of g of x. So the composition of f and g here is defined to be this, right, f of g of x. And what we're going to do here is I'm just going to write down what g of x is equal. Well, we know g of x is 6 minus x squared. So when we're doing f of g of x, we're just doing f of 6 minus x squared. So now what we need to do is take 6 minus x squared and plug it into the f function. The same way you would plug a number in, except that this time you're not plugging in a number, you're plugging in this variable expression. So when you plug something into f, you do 5 times that thing and then minus 4. So this is going to be 5 times 6 minus x squared minus 4. And this is 30 minus 5x squared minus 4, which is negative 5x squared plus 26. All right. So that is f of g. And then finally, I want to do g of f. Well, g of f is the same idea, except that now you are plugging f of x into g of x. So this is going to be g of whatever f of x is equal to. And f of x, remember, was 5x minus 4. And now when we do g of anything, we are just going to plug that into our g function. So we're just going to replace the x here in the g function with the expression 5x minus 4. And so when we do that, we get 6 minus the quantity 5x minus 4 squared. And now we have to do the math here. This is 6 minus 5x minus 4 times 5x minus 4. Be very careful here. We need to multiply this out. This is going to give us 6 minus the quantity 25x squared minus 20x minus 20x plus 16. And when we distribute the negative, we're going to get 6 minus 25x squared plus 20x plus 20x minus 16. And finally, if we combine like terms and put everything in descending order, we end up getting this function. So of course, one of the things I want to point out here is that the composition f of g and the composition g of f, notice that they give you two very different answers. And this is typically the case. Most of the time, your uh, compositions one way versus the other way are going to not be the same. One last thing to mention here is that the domains for these functions are all real numbers. And that's true for both of these. And that's because the original functions had domains of all real numbers. And when you combine them together, there are no restrictions, uh, such as dividing by zero or taking the square root of a negative. We don't have any of those kinds of concerns with these functions. So the domain here is all real numbers for each of those. Let's take a look at a slightly more interesting example. 
In this next example, we have f of x equals 5 over x and g of x equals 3x minus 4. We want to find both compositions, f of g and g of f, and their domains. So let's start with f of g. So f of g, again, that's defined to be f of g of x. And g of x is 3x minus 4. So this is f of 3x minus 4. And we are just going to plug 3x minus 4 into f of x. And so this gives us 5 divided by 3x minus 4. Now, the domain for g is minus infinity to infinity. And the domain for f is minus infinity to zero union zero to infinity, right? Because we can't plug zero in here. So this is saying we could plug in anything to the left of zero and anything to the right of zero, but just not zero itself. So when you're doing domains, what you need to do is look at your result here and think about what number can you not plug in here? Clearly three X minus four cannot be zero. And that means that X cannot be equal to four thirds. And then you have to think about, are there any additional restrictions? Because the definition of the domain is you take the domain of F of G of X, but you also have to consider the domain of G of X. Or to put it more succinctly, you have to consider the domain of the inside function. Now, the inside function here is g of x, and there are no restrictions on g of x. And that means that there are no additional restrictions here. So the domain for this is simply minus infinity to 4 thirds, union 4 thirds to infinity. Okay, so basically, it's just, you know, you can't plug in 4 thirds because that will make the denominator 0. Let's take a look at it the other way around. Let's do g of f, which of course is defined to be g of f of x. And this is g of, and then f of x is five divided by x. And so for this one, we're going to plug five over x into g of x. So this gives us three times five over x minus 4. And this is basically 15 over x minus 4, right? Because 3 here is the same as 3 over 1. So we're just multiplying straight across. Now, you can leave your answer like this. By the way, this was the answer up here. Um, but you can also give it the answer in a different way. So we have this answer if you look at the denominator there, you can get a common denominator by multiplying by x to the top and the bottom. And if you do that, you get 15 minus 4x over x. Okay, so both of these are acceptable, but, um, you know, just wanted to say sometimes we, we actually prefer this answer over the first answer. Okay, now what about the domain? Well, clearly we can see that you cannot plug in x equals zero here because that will make you divide by zero. And then if you look at f of x, the inside function for this problem, its restriction is also x cannot be zero. So the restriction for this composition function is everything except for zero. So we're gonna write that in this way. All right, let's take a look at one more example. It's always interesting when both functions are fractions. So this is the same type of problem that we just finished. What I'd like to do here is find the function f of g, which of course we know means f of g of x. And we know that that means we are going to substitute g of x, which is the function one over x, into the function f of x. So we're going to put one over X into here. And when we do that, we get one over X divided by one over X 
plus 2. Now, we cannot leave our answer like this. We need to simplify this answer, and we're going to do that by multiplying the top by x and multiplying the bottom by x. And when we do that, in the numerator, when you multiply by x, these cancel out, and we just get 1. And in the denominator, you need to distribute the x to here and also to here. And so x times 1 over x, the x's cancel, and you just get 1. Plus, and then x multiplied by 2 is 2x. So f of g of x is 1 over 1 plus 2x, and I could change that to 2x plus 1 if I want. So here's our composition. Now, what's the domain? Well, for the domain, we can see clearly that 2x plus 1 cannot be equal to 0. And that means that x cannot be equal to negative 1 half. But that's not our only restriction. Because when you're doing a composition, you also have to concern yourself with your inside function. Did our inside function have any restriction? Well, let's look at that inside function, g of x. Clearly, the domain for g of x is x cannot be 0. So this is the part that's a little bit tricky. Even though in your composition there's no problem with 0, you cannot plug in the number 0 into your composition because you can't plug the number 0 into the function g of x in the first place. So what that means is not only is x equal to negative 1 half a restriction, but also x equals 0 is a restriction. So you have two restricted values in the domain of your composition. And so the domain is going to be all real numbers except for negative 1 half and 0. And this is how we write that in interval notation. So again, when you do a composition, you get the domain of that composition by simply considering the end result, right? So we know that 2x plus 1 cannot be 0. But then we have to, to look at the invisible restriction, which is you have to think about what restriction did the inside function have in the beginning? And I know that can be a little bit confusing. Let's look at g of f. Excuse me, let's look at f of f. That's the next one, f of f. Okay, so for f of f, we are going to plug f into itself. So we're going to do f of f of x, and that means f of x over x plus 2. And that means that we're going to take x over x plus 2, and we're going to plug it into x in both places in the f function. And so this gives us x over x plus 2 divided by x over x plus 2 plus 2. And let's just go ahead and get this out of the way right now. Your original function f of x has a domain where x cannot be negative 2. Right? Because if you plug in negative 2, that makes the denominator 0. We'll need that in just a minute. Now, first thing I need to do here is I need to simplify this function. So I'm going to multiply by x plus 2 to the top and to the bottom. And when I multiply it to the bottom, I'm going to multiply it by both of these. And when we do the math here... On top, these cancel out, and so we just get x. Down on the bottom here, these cancel out, so we just get x again. Plus, and then here, there's nothing that cancels out, so we're just going to multiply this out. That's going to be 2x plus 4. This equals x over 3x plus 4. 
So that's our composition. And we know that 3x plus 4 cannot be equal to 0. That means x cannot be equal to negative 4 thirds. And then f itself had a restriction in the beginning. In f itself, we know that x cannot be negative 2. So we need to bring that restriction down here as well. That's an additional restriction. Even though when you look at this function that we have in the end, there appears to be nothing wrong with plugging in negative 2. But again, because you can't plug it into the inside function here, you can't plug it into the result in the end. So the domain here in the end is all numbers from negative infinity to negative 2. Union, all numbers from negative 2 to negative 4 thirds. Union, all the numbers from negative 4 thirds to infinity. And if you're wondering about the interval notation, you know, just draw a graph. And you know that negative 2 is on the graph here, and negative 4 thirds is larger than negative 2. And so we're just saying that x can be any number, just not these two numbers. Okay, that concludes this section.